Hello, it's Dave and Annie. It's Wednesday today and it's been very showery, the weather. There's a bit of thunder in the air as well, so yeah, it's been raining on and off all day, heavy bursts. Um, so it's brightened up there. Hopefully I'll not get another shower, but by the sounds of it, I think I am. So I'm going to get the kettle on, see what happens. This might be the quickest allotment update ever. So I'll see you in a bit. Dave at the allotment. Dave, what are you after this afternoon? Still cracking on at the allotment. Get the kettle on. It's Dave at the allotment. See you in a bit. Well, you wouldn't think it had been just chucking down about half an hour ago. Uh, I'll show you the clouds. Haven't had any rain for, like I say, about half an hour, but that would make a canny picture. Um, there is a, there has been a couple of rumbles in the air, so no doubt we will get one. But before it does start raining, <coughs> and uh, before I forget, blackberries. Now I've got this year. I've had an absolute load already and there's still an absolute load on there which brings us on to a, a subject which I've um, I've mentioned before but I was watching I was watching Ian's video Ian Nockton the other day he was on about uh, blackberries being um, so early this year what the hell I'm just watching this what the see if I can see that something's eating the black oh it just flew off it was a blackbird bloody blackbirds eating the blackberries um, aye Ian was saying that he's never known the blackberries to be out so early and uh, I've noticed that for the past few years they have been getting earlier and earlier and I remember when I was a bairn um, the school holidays in autumn half term was called blackberry week and that's because all the blackberries were out and we used to go you know the whole family would go down to the well we had the docks down on North Shields there was just loads of blackberries there um, and we used to go there end of November like October, November time, you know, so by that time all these blackberries will be dead then so it just, it just shows you there's something uh, happening to the climate blackberries never used to be a summer fruit oh, they were always autumn fruit well, they were, they were in Newcastle anyway just going to have to watch where I'm going here going to have a bit of a tidy up round here as well today so like I say before it starts raining I'm going to get a, a little crop of blackberries for later on so I'll see you in a bit right just while I'm having a cup because it's going to rain any excuse um, a few people have asked us in the past so I'll use this opportunity to show you how to make a beer can man. Beer can man. I like beer can man. It's, it's a good little bird scare, you know, you hang them up around your garden and uh, the shakes in the wind. They work okay for me, like, and they, you know, they look arid. 
So what you do is you get some beer or lager or whatever. Use any can you want, but um, LCL. That's what I drink. And if you if you want, you should try and get some if you've never tried it because it is it's a nice uh, a nice little thirst quencher at the end of a nice uh, hard day's graft, you know. So there's me a little plug for um, LCL. Give us some free cans. <laughs> uh, what do I need? Aye. So you get a can, get yourself a Stanley knife, make a couple of little holes in. I haven't got all the uh, stuff I usually use with us because uh, that's all in the house. But I, I can basically show you. So you cut round, cut off the top and top, uh, top and the bottom. Using the t two holes that you used there uh, with a starting knife. And then cut it down there so you can open it out, you know. So, like that. Then you can bend it round. You can also trim it off so it's it's not like raggy, but it doesn't really matter. They're getting it's getting covered up by something later. So, like I say, then you you get a a pen or a nail or anything the way you've joined it together, where it's overlapping. Poke the nail through both bits. Like I say, it's quite easy because it's only like thin aluminium. So you've got two holes in there and there. That's so you can use the wire to, to wrap it round. Here's what I made earlier. It's a bit, like I say, it's a bit rough. You can take a bit more time and effort making it a bit more pretty. But you know, they've all got character. Plus as well, the best way to use is that, go, you know, the green garden wire. You get it from the pound shop for loads of it. That's the best to use. Or you can also use the modeling wire, which is bend, bendy, especially for the legs. Because once you get to that stage, well, I've... I've Explain more about that later. So yeah, you just uh, get them together like that. Then you cut another can. So it's got the top up off there. Keep that bit on. And that slots over there. But what you do is make another couple of holes. For his arms, then you just get some wire. But this is the only wire I've got handy. But you could just make a knot in, not in one side, and slot it through like that, for example. So there's his arm. Now if all you've got to do is make cut another can into little squares, any size you want really for them, you know, for his arms and legs and what have you. But do just the same as what you did to make the body. A couple of holes in, a little bit wire, wrap it round. Then once it's done, just slot it through. And 
there just so you get the general idea. And with the bit that you've cut off here, you make a little uh, little slit in it. See that'll be the shape, that's his nose, two eyes. So you want to slit down at the bottom where the mouth bit is. Careful when you're doing this because it's uh, dodgy. I've had years of practice. Ha. Oh, I don't know where to put it. Uh, right. That's just to give you an idea anyway. So you just make a slot and slot it over the top there. It hasn't worked very well. But it will stay on if you make the slot correctly. Eh? There you are. So I'll see you in a bit, right? See you later, la lot. I'll see you when I'm all made. I just need some legs. Easy, pretty good to like, you know, mess about with when it's a rainy day. You can make a whole yeah, family of them. Anyway, that's that. I've got something to show you. So I'll move the camera around and I, I want to ask you if anybody knows what this is. This like everything else in the allotment, it's come from a skip. Now the skip was um, in a school, and it looked it was all the um, they were refurbishing the art department. So this must have come from the art department. It's uh, some sort of press. Got like a plate. Well, you can see. So does anybody know if anybody's got any ideas on what that is, I'd be appreciated. I was going to try and make some, uh, some sort of, what do you call it, you know, like just compress some paper mache together and make like blocks for the stove in the winter with it somehow. I'm just curious to know what it is, so if anybody does know, cheers. I'm going to crack on with a cup of now. Season a bit. Well, you just caught us eating me peas. Bloody lovely these, I kind of get enough of them. Don't worry Paul, I'll save some for you. Lovely. Well, the rain stopped off. Just had a little tiny shower in the afternoon there. But there were heavy, a little bit thunder. I managed to do some tidying up and pick some of my harvest. So I'll uh, make a quick tab and then show you around. Now next week, or within the next couple of weeks, my mate, he'll be, uh, he's going to make something for us. Now he's a genius with, um, you know, electrical things. And what he can do is rig up this thing. Um, when the time comes, I will show you. Because like I said, a couple of weeks time, well, you get two car batteries and you can, when you switch it on, you can run like a high fat or anything, telly, if you wanted. Um, and it constantly charges the other battery up, which I think is fantastic. <coughs> run lights, you know, anything. So, and it's cheap as well, you just need a couple of car batteries, which is a fiver. And then, um, 
one of them emergency car converter kit things you get from the uh, Halfords or whatever. A little bit of jiggery pokery. But I'll show you is that, like I say, when it's happening. So, have a little bit of a tour around today now, see what's been happening. Look at the size of that cabbage. Starting to get a nice heart on it there. So, you know, it just shows you you don't have to do anything. I didn't even realise that cabbage was there. It was just an old, like, the stem of a cabbage from last year. Chucked there. It was supposed to get burnt, but it was too wet. Uh, and that's what's happened. The cabbage has, has appeared. Probably the biggest cabbage I've ever grew as well. I've chucked, uh, chopped them artichokes back now. There's, there's still a couple on. I had about uh, 10 on out together, but oh look. A little bit of an artistic shot there for later on. But aye, that's the rest of them. I have been getting a kind of few of these broad beans off, like, but it's the first time they've only grew that big before. Me beetroot needs to be pulled up. There's no, still no sign of the seeds I sowed a couple of weeks ago, but uh, if you can see them, the lettuce is up now. Um, the runner beans are just starting to come on, tiny, there isn't any actually ready yet, and which brings us on to these Pilotti beans, now I've got an absolute load of these on, but I'm a bit unsure, so if anybody can help us out, I know Tony you'll be able to, um, when do I pick these? Do I wait until there's an actual, like, the beans are inside? Or do I, can you eat the whole thing? Because, like I say, I've got bloody loads of them on. The thing is, as well, they're all inside that, this net. So I'll have to figure something out there. Um, nothing much else has been happening up here. Oh, what I have got up here to show you. Is my me, me latest skip find. Apart from that unknown machine that I don't know what it is. Some sort of press. But I got all of this. There's about 25 metres of picket fencing. And it's good. Good quality. You know, it's virtually brand new. What I was thinking about is making some sort of bench for inside the greenhouse. But that's a winter job. There's the golden rod the bees the bees there's all sorts of different bees on these two different sorts of bees anyway I do run out of battery. Yeah, I've had a, haven't done anything round yet. I've got a line of main crop Morris papers, but I've dug one up and I'm not expecting anything off them. These giant onions. You know what? I just wish there was a show coming up round here, like, but they're not until later on in the month, and they're not going to last until that long. But uh, I've got three. Perfect shape size, uh, perfect size ones. Three exactly the same. That one, that one, and that one. I've pulled one of them up because it's it's split. 
but it's still got eight. Here's another thing, them potatoes I planted the other week for the Christmas ones. They're up. There's one, two, three, and the, the fourth one hasn't appeared, but it's coming on. Courgette. It's got a courgette on. Like I say, I forgot that was there. I don't know if I'll actually get anything off it or not. I'm not sure. There's that uh, leak. I've had a little tidy up around there. Get rid of some of the weeds. Prepared for some winter stuff. Um, what else have I got to show you before I sign off? <coughs> Nothing much happening in there. There's my onions drying out, hanging upside down. There's the peppers, nagas. Don't know if you can see any on there, like. Well, I'm not, I put this um, wire over the, the mesh, just so cats can't get in or whatever, you know, birds. Um, I'll show you what I've picked today. Oh. Tomatoes. I'm getting loads of these. I'm getting about the same amount of tomatoes nearly every day now. There's my cu one of two of my cucumbers. Not bad. I just hope they taste all right. Should do like. But I had to pull it off, uh, pull them off because they were that pulled the plant down because they were too heavy, you know. And there's the blackberries. Lovely these, like. Nice biggins. There's a few small ones in, but most of them are big. Nice, you know. Blackberry pie. Right, two seconds, I'll just... Uh, oop. Nearly bang, bang into the shed there. I'll just get me later. Right, it's turned into a nice night. It's half six now. Show you what's happening in here. Not, not much really. Like, still got a boatload of tomatoes on, ripening up. Too many to eat. Like I say, I'm getting like nearly two pound a day, and there's only so many tomatoes you can eat. Like, but here's me cucumber. Getting cucumbers. I've had to, uh, like I say, the weight of it, the weight of them two cucumbers pulled it down, and it was lying on the floor when I got here. Well, it's alright now. Grapes are still there and doing okay. Irene, I know you're keeping an eye out. That's what they look like now. It'll be about uh, October and start of November before you start seeing any grapes. I hope they taste alright. Huh? <laughs> they usually do, like. But they've got seeds in. So folks, it's just a quick uh, little update to let you know I'm still alive. Um, after I cooked, I cooked my potatoes, sautéed, <laughs> tasted nice. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Aye, that's it for me now, I'm going to go home for my tea. Um, I'll be back here on Sunday, so I'll probably make another video then. Because um, Paul has a way to... But it's a Harry Potter thing, National Express tour. They're going to the Harry Potter studios and that, so but she, she's away for the weekend. I'll have to get stuck into the allotment, get it all tidied up. So, excuse me, bit of pee stuck in my tooth there. Um, I'll see you on Sunday. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and um, Hello to all the new subscribers I've made in the past month. Thanks for, like I say, subscribing. And a big thank you to all my subscribers I've had since I started making the videos. Because I know there's quite a few years of uh, stayed with us. And I appreciate it. So, thanks again. And I'll see you in a bit.